The somatosensory homunculus is alive, forever changing and adapting in response to the world's stimuli. This change is just part of the central nervous system's plasticity and changes in the homunculus are referred to as cortical reorganization. The term smudging is also used as a visual representation of these changes on the somatosensory homunculus. This reorganization is important because it has a relationship with pain. We know that pain, especially the persistent type, reduces proprioception, sensory acuity and motor control. And this is thought to both trigger and be triggered by reduced representation in the brain's cortical body map. We also see distortion, smudging, of the communication between the sensory and motor elements. These distortions and corrections have been discovered through both animal and human studies, which include a study by Allard et al. 1991, which noted the reorganization of the somatosensory representations in adult owl monkeys after digital syndactyly, or fusion of the fingers. What was interesting was not just the fact that if you fuse two fingers together for a prolonged period of time, their cortical representation also fuses in the brain, but when unfused, the fingers are allowed to move freely again, the somatosensory representation then corrects itself. Research also indicates the potential to not just normalize representation, but to actually enhance it as well. Braille readers have been shown to have enlarged finger representation in the somatosensory cortex. More specific to our cause, people with persistent low back pain have been shown to have different cortical representations of their back when compared to healthy controls. Chronic back pain was also associated with disruption of the working body schema of the trunk in a latter study by Bray and Mosley. The authors commented that this might be an important contributor to motor control abnormalities seen in this population. It's interesting to note that our cortical representation is not fully reliant on external stimuli and most likely has an intrinsic core which develops independent of stimuli. This idea is supported by research, including the study by Melzak et al. in 1997, which showed that people born without fully formed limbs still have a body map representative of the full body. This leaves us to theorize that the somatosensory homunculus is highly adaptive, but is formed with and maintains a representative core. And clearly there's more to learn about this concept. Rehabilitation focuses on restoring range and power, but many commonly miss protecting and restoring cortical representation. With acute injuries, the cortical organisation will most likely normalise, but it's all too common to see patient cases where dysfunction and pain has persisted. You only have to look at the long-term follow-up data for shoulder pain, neck pain and patellofemoral joint pain to realise that many patients are not fully recovering. While it would be overzealous to suggest that precision training is the magic bullet, it might be reasonable to suggest it offers an evidence-informed treatment approach. Precision training, or discrimination training, sees us take a more mindful approach. As the famous neuroscientist Michael Merzenich said, neuroplastic changes occur when the brain pays close attention while learning. This close attention is thought to provide greater cortical changes and reduce factors that contribute to pain maintenance. Specific examples include the work of Jensen et al. in 2005, who reported that visuomotor exercises that involved precision repositioning tasks led to increased cortical spinal excitability when compared to heavy strength training of the elbow flexors in a cohort of 24 healthy humans. This study supports the concept but fails to focus on a common clinical problem unless you are a bicep specialist. More in tune with common presentations, another study identified the efficacy of retraining cervical joint position sense in patients with persistent neck pain. The study of 64 females found that both proprioceptive training and craniocervical flexion training were effective at reducing pain. And although both groups reduced their joint position error, it was most improved in the proprioceptive training group. There are many more studies that support the precision training concept. The final one I use is by Larima Mosley and colleagues published in 2008. They demonstrated that when patients with chronic regional pain syndrome, CRPS, were required to focus on tactile stimulation by reporting on the changing type and location of tactile stimuli, the reported immediate and three month follow up pain relief was significantly greater than when stimulation without attentional focus was provided. The research therefore supports the concept of improving the attentional focus of the therapeutic stimulus. 
But what are the proposed mechanisms for precision training? The three potential mechanisms of action for precision training are as follows. Distraction may occur from directing focus away from pain to a more neutral, less noxious and even more positive stimulus. For example, a more goal-orientated task rather than stopping when it hurts. Exposure was developed from the foundations of behavioural science to tackle clinical anxiety. It has been increasingly used for patients with kinesiophobia to deconstruct maladaptive fear of movement and to also develop pain coping strategies. When we get people moving, there is always a degree of exposure therapy occurring. And then there's cortical reorganization. Normalizing the cortical representation is the most exciting potential mechanism for reducing persistent pain. While a true causal link has not yet been demonstrated, the concept is supported by increasing correlational evidence. So, in conclusion, Precision training is about facilitating your patients to engage in targeted mindfulness during treatment, to distract the focus away from pain, and towards sensory discrimination, precision, and proprioceptive skill acquisition. It's also about extinguishing unhelpful movement narratives and pain beliefs to bring about sustainable change to the patient's function and normalize their cortical representation to unsmudge the homunculus. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. There's a couple of other videos showing on the screen here that may be of interest to you. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon. <music>